What other big advice do you have for people starting out or even people like me? Like, I, I think you guys are light years ahead of me in the, in the mediation techniques and things like that. Like, what could I learn or do better or somebody starting out? Boy, uh, <laughs> let, let, let's restart the program. Okay. <laughs> I don't do everything we just said. <laughs> I guess uh, passion, patience, a path, and persistence. That that that's what you need. That's what you need. And then be humble and be compassionate to yourself so that you can be compassionate to other people. See, that was perfect. That was really it. well said, Elliot. <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's true. Kind of everything that we said summarizes that. I, I think um, don't be afraid to ask for help, too. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, reach out to people. It's interesting I, when I, I do mentor people and I, because I've, I've made a commitment to do that because of having such a hard time finding a mentor, right? And um, the, the people that are, if you can just find the people that are willing to help, it is such a process. I mean, be, like Elliot said, patience in the process that um, I, I have a meeting coming up with someone that I have so much respect for. I was in, in a mediator that I'm, you know, a little bit intimidated because I am newer on this process. It's only been, you know, six or seven years for me. Um, so I think, uh, you know, recognizing that we're learning all the time. Like you said, Melissa, I love that when you talked about co-mediating with someone because I, I have my own business, right? And sometimes there's a benefit to someone being able to say, to see what I can't see. I mean, that's what we bring to mediation, right? That we help people see what they can't see mm -hmm. on their own because we only know what we know. So trying to be objective with myself, you know, how did that go to run it through my head? I mean, that's a benefit for having a co-mediator um, is they can see things that you can't mm -hmm. and um, which is wonderful because a light bulb can come in from that, but also they can recognize maybe, you know, where improvement can be had. So like you, I'm always reading, um, you know, uh, and uh, on my kitchen table, on my desk, I usually have one of Ken Cloak's books, either Mediating Dangerously or, you know, one of his uh, that I refer to to help not fall into the trap of treating each mediation the same. Like, I don't want to do that. Right. I want to go in aware that uh, each person's story is unique. And to go in being as much in the present as possible. And, um, you know, literally to for me, I go into a mediation um, with a with a prayer for grace and wisdom, you know, and to, to make it not about me ever in that mediation to keep the focus on the clients and let them own their outcome which can be really hard when you think, oh, this could be better here. This could be better here. Or maybe they're this. I mean, to recognize it is their story and, right. you know, that I'm helping them write their story. Yeah. So, their, it's their path. It's mm -hmm. their, their journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we could all just sit here and be like, well, I could tell you where you're going to be at the end. You know, that could be great. But I think everybody has to go through their own journey in this process um, in general or in, in mediation. Um, it never turns out like I think it'll turn out. Mm -hmm. I think if we stay in the moment while we're doing what we do without our own agenda, if it turns out how I think it's going to turn out, then maybe I was driving it to get it there. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, it's not mediation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? True mediation. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's part of the challenge. It's like, uh, Elliot said, you know, regulating ourselves, and, you know, it's, it's probably one of the hardest things and then being open to the emotion. So I would recommend 
I really would for mediators to become skilled at understanding uh, emotions, conflict, the biology of emotions and conflict. If you understand the biology of it, then what looks like too much or abnormal to us because we name things like anger is a problem is it, it is like we talked about. It just is. So we accept that and we ask questions to explore that and what need is missing from that and all those things. So to become comfortable in that is quite the process. <music>